The Ohio Sheep Improvement Association and the Ohio Sheep and Wool Program are proud to recognize Roger Cox as the Charles Boyles Master Shepherd of the Year. The, the award was started in 1987 and it was to honor uh, people who are, uh, are or fa families uh, that are involved in the sheep industry uh, as, uh, as leaders, uh, as, uh, as business people, and as shepherds uh, that uh, have done a, a good job of producing and managing sheep for, uh, for, for a good number of years, uh, either their whole life or, or got into it uh, a little later uh, after, uh, after high school and stuff. So we've had a lot of uh, different varieties, uh, types of people that have gotten the Master Shepherd Award over the years. And, and uh, this, is a, uh, uh, this is the highest award that the sheep industry gives each year. Well, I've known uh, the Cox family for many years. We grew up in the same county, uh, Morrow County. Uh, I, uh, we traveled the, the show circuit together. Uh, they showed some uh, Hampshires at the time. I was good friends with their, with uh, Roger and uh, Jay and sons, uh, Brett and Scott. Uh, I know Holly, she's a little bit younger. Uh, she's uh, the one that kind of came. I did the nomination, uh, has worked with me through the process uh, for, the, uh, for the award. My family's uh, raised sheep for all my life, and my dad raised sheep, and uh, I guess our ancestors came from Scotland and Ireland, one thing or another, and they, uh, supposedly they had sheep. And then my son, Brett, and my grandson, Josh, they have Katahdins, and, and they got some pretty good-sized flocks, and my daughter has a small flock of Katahdins. In his own um, sheep world, uh, he is a, he's a shepherd that certainly is deserving of the uh, Charles Boyles Master Shepherd Award. I've known Roger pretty much all my life. Um, he's a great friend. I think he was, you look at him, he's a good husband, good father, good grandfather. Um, back when they was purebred, had the purebred hamps, they was really successful with them. Um, they had a hog unit, fair to finish. Um, he was done a great job with that, fed cattle, row crop farm. Anytime you're ever up there, the, the livestock always looked immaculate. Uh, his crops always looked good. Um, probably just one of the all around, just good old boys. Him and Jan do a great job together. I've known Roger for a long time. He goes clear back to high school days when I used to deliver feed out to their farm. He was a tenant farmer, kept oh, 120 ewes plus all the time. Later on in the years, and when I turned 13 or so, I started shearing at his place with two other gentlemen, Clayton Fry and Dwayne Reinhardt, which always was a privilege because we scheduled on Saturday so Jan would be home to fix our lunch. Back then, everyone fixed your lunches, and Jan was a super cook. Uh, over the years, though, Roger showed 4-H camps at the Morrow County Fair, State Fair, and a lot of fairs that we went to. Roger's a little older than myself, so I always looked up to him. And his grandpa was quite the sheep guy also. Many trips with him to Louisville, or not to Louisville back then, Harrisburg and Chicago in the Midwest one time. Uh, like I say, Roger wasn't afraid to try new things. He used Cheviot Rams, he used Southdown Rams, and he uh, would try anything to better his sheep production and uh, make a dollar. Yeah, my, um, my mother and dad bought me a, a registered Hampshire ewe uh, and a pair of twin lambs uh, back in 1958 and we had hamps for a long time. We showed them when I was younger, and then as I got involved in farming, we kind of went from the registered sheep to more commercial sheep, and we've had those uh, all this time. And, and then in 05, we bought our first flock of Katahdins, uh, and we still had our, our other sheep, which were basically Suffolk and Dorset Cross, pretty much. And uh, we kind of, put them on trial a little bit, see if we was going to like them, how they were going to fit in. And as time went by, we, we really liked them. And so, uh, you know, pretty much that's what we've done. Uh, we sell uh, some breeding stock. Um, seems like there's quite a demand for ewe lambs right now and ram lambs. And so we're kind of into that. And that's kind of value added 
product for us over and above what the market uh, uh, brings us. And, and also, um, uh, we do some terminal breeding, uh, some terminal rams just for market lambs. And so that's kind of value added also. Um, I think they're definitely a role model in it. Um, anybody that whether you're been in it a long time or you're just getting started, I think you could go up to Roger and you know ask any questions and Roger would be very helpful with um, feeding or grazing or you know he's he's always there to he'll listen to anybody and he'll he'll give you good advice. I've always felt. Well I think one reason there's a lot of rotational intensive grazing going on they, they're adapted to forages uh, and they're kind of easy keepers, they're prolific, uh, longevity is on their side, that is a use seem to last quite a while. We get sometimes as high as seven, eight, nine lambings out of a ewe before we have to find a color out. Well, like I say, Roger's always been involved with the fair, very active with the fair activities going on, and you would always be able to sit down with Roger. Roger never left the farm very often. So when he got to the fair or got out in public, he would talk to you a lot. And he would give you good advice. He, a lot of people wouldn't give you good advice all the time. They were more interested in selling sheep or trading or something, but Roger would never lead you astray. He would tell you the good and the bad about anything, whether it's life, sheep, or whatever. The biggest changes that I've seen is um, uh, you know, more people going to rotational grazing and marketing lambs right from pasture uh, right on the trailer to mark. They got enough finish on. I guess it's a lighter lambs uh, like we produce. That's a big deal. Uh, you know, 20, 30 years ago, our lambs was going out of here weighing 130, 40, 45 pounds, some of, them, some of the big lambs. And now um, the market's changed quite a bit for us, and you can still produce those kind of lambs. But uh, with the pasture and everything, the, um, the, the smaller breeds and the lighter lambs, lighter lambs are selling really good. Uh, we market quite a few of our lambs. Actually, last year, uh, I haven't figured this year's yet because we just finished up selling lambs, but last year 91% of the lambs went from the pasture to the trailer and they had enough uh, finish to, to grade well and then about 90 percent went in on a little bit of show corn and some supplement just to finish those off uh, but i guess to sum it up the market today it's uh you know we can the demand is for some of these smaller lambs we've been so blessed uh, you know jan and i like a lot of other people kind of started on the bottom rung and we've been able to buy a couple farms and pay for them we're just very blessed people and, and you know, I, I appreciate this country so much because we had an opportunity. You work hard, manage well, and things come together in America. And, and that, that's what I believe in, and that's, I've, I've had the privilege to live in that.